Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to CW Live. My name is Chris Webb, Head of Communications. Welcome to a really great first episode in our new studio. We're going to, we're going to be discussing the big issue of the day, the universal service obligation. We've had uh, submissions into Ofcom at the end of their consultation process. We've seen some developments today from the company. It's only right that we, as your trade union, get out there, let you know where we're coming from. Hopefully, you'd have seen some of our comms drop in, our reps brief, which has gone out there. We're producing a members brief as well, so you understand just where the union's coming from. But we've got our General Secretary, Dave Ward, and our Deputy General Secretary, Postal, Hi, everyone. Martin Hi, Walsh, uh, both of those two with you. So we thought, um, great chance to get on in our first session in the new studio. One of the things to say before we start though, is we are very much uh, testing today. So we, in a couple of weeks, uh, both Dave and Martin have agreed to come in and do a major live session with the members where we're gonna open the phone lines and you can come on and you can tell us your concerns, your ideas, your plans for the USO because we believe it's important that it's not just a debate between a regulator and a company, that you as postal workers and CW members get to have a say in where the universal service obligation goes. But during this session, we are gonna hear from some of you, uh, some postal workers from across the country who've been regularly commenting on our social media pages, regularly raising issues. So I hope, I'm sure you're gonna find that interesting. Before we hear from you though, uh, Dave and Martin, I'll give you the chance if I can, just to set the scene, starting with you, Dave is General Secretary on where we are and oh, I suppose, you know, hot off the press today's developments. Yeah, okay, so a uh, really important day uh, from the point of view that once again we're having to deal with the reality of change uh, and I think we can't face away from that. Uh, that's one of our messages, has been for a long time. Uh, if we want to keep the company moving, uh, there's lots of problems with Royal Mail Management which we'll address. Uh, and we'll talk, tell you about where we are with talks with the company on some of the issues that you're having to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But we also have to take a responsible view on the future of the universal service. And you saw that Ofcom put out a number of consultations uh, that closed today on a, on a range of options for the USO. When that first came out on the 24th of January, there was a lot of media interest and we were out there then making it very clear that some of those options were very damaging. Um, so in one way, um, you know, we, we want to make sure that we rule out things like a three-day USO, a four-day USO, and some of the speed of delivery changes that Ofcom have been talking about. And the union's been in that position for some time. We believe we have influenced politicians, both the government uh, and the Labour Party, and also obviously Royal Mail, um, to take a, a different view to what we were hearing prior to the Ofcom report being sent out. So we've made our submission, uh, and what we're going to deal with today, we're going to deal with, you know, what we're saying, and then we're going to deal with where Royal Mail are and where talks are. So first of all, our own submission is, is set against the context that we know the USO is not sustainable in its current format in the longer term. Uh, that's because of obviously the declining letters uh, and it's also uh, a result of Royal Mail's unfortunately self-inflicted in many ways uh, financial problems. And we have to address the reality of that irrespective of what we're feeling about the company. Um, so that's the context to this and our submission some of the key points, you'll be able to find our full submission. It's very long, uh, 50 pages long. Detail. Uh, detail. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because the questions that Ofcom answered need to be uh, asked, rather, need to be answered you know, very carefully and from a strategic point of view, as well as an operational point of view. So what we've highlighted is that on the three and four day option, we've completely, obviously, rejected that. But we have said, uh, in our submission that we would be willing to consider a move from six into five days uh, providing that was alongside a seven day parcel delivery and providing there was a premium service on letters that could deal with things like the NHS, greeting cards, magazines uh, and for vulnerable people uh, items such as articles for the blind. We still feel that that would need to be delivered on a Saturday going forward. Um, but we've ruled out all of the other changes to uh, the frequency, reducing the frequency option. Um, on the changes in speed of delivery, 
uh, which is where Royal Mail have landed, uh, and they've got their proposal, which is different uh, to the ones that Ofcom put forward on speed of delivery. Um, between us, we're, we'll explain that. Uh, where we, what we're saying on that is, is that we couldn't support changes to speed of delivery uh, that impacted on first class, so i.e. where first class wasn't being delivered uh, six days a week, and where the second class spec uh, was changed to a worse delivery standard. And although we've seen some of Royal Mail's comms, their actual proposal is to maintain the second class spec uh, within what's meant to be delivered now. Uh, we've said that we would accept or look at uh, some changes to speed of delivery on other products and that's basically the bulk mail product. So in some ways um, we're in a similar position to Royal Mail but operationally Royal Mail will have their view on how that is dealt with and we will probably have a different view and we'll have to get in the room and talk about that. So let's deal with Royal Mail. Um, Look, we're not happy with the company. We know that they're still not addressing the issues. You saw that recently on Panorama. Um, the company will never succeed unless it addresses quality of service. You can't talk about the future of the USO and not talk about the current problems uh, that are often manufactured by the company. So we've got to deal with quality of service. We've got to deal with resourcing. Resourcing at the moment is chaotic, again caused by the company. The new terms and conditions uh, is not working. 85% of people they've employed have left. It is chaotic out there for our members and we have to find a way of seeing the USO as a need for change but not viewing it in isolation to the rest of the things. Where I think we'll be a little bit different from the company is that they will probably try and see it in isolation. Mm. And it's up to us to set out our bargaining agenda, uh, and we see this as an opportunity to deliver a new settlement for postal workers to get out of some of the chaos. I think the honest position is the current delivery model is broken, uh, and we've got a chance here to rebuild completely with a better deal for our members, whilst also acknowledging uh, that there's gonna have to be some change. We think we can turn that to our members' advantage in terms of attendance patterns uh, and in terms of, uh, you know, better overall terms and conditions and manageable workload, which clearly at the moment there's still a lot of offices where th they can't complete. Uh, so we've got to address those issues as part of this debate, not separate from this debate. Um, we've got a bargaining agenda. We've had uh, discussions, exploratory discussions with the CEO of the company uh, and with the senior team. Um, Martin will start to talk about some of those issues now. Um, so, you know, we'd urge you to read our submission if you get a chance, uh, but also look at some of the comms that we're sending out, which summarizes it. We're still saying the USO is a major contributor to the UK's economy, and it offers far more than just delivering letters. It has a social value, and we think that we can still build on that uh, and expand the role for postal workers, not in a way that gives you more work, but gives you different types of work uh, in the future that can protect jobs and take the company forward. Thanks Dave, I think that's an excellent opening statement that really sets the scenes for the members. Uh, should say to you both, we've already got thousands of people on watching, so that's fantastic. We know many of you will be at work today. Uh, it's available on Catch Up, and as I said at the top of the show, we'll be back in a couple of weeks live uh, on one evening where we'll take your direct questions. Martin, your open statement. Yeah, look, look, good afternoon, everyone. In terms of where we are, I think we're always going to get to the point where uh, the USO, uh, in its current form, would have to be changed. Uh, and whilst we will oppose uh, the three or four day options, you will see the last uh, few years that letter volumes have drifted and parcels have grown. The real challenge is only 14% of what we deliver and process today is covered by the USO. All the other streams are not USO linked. Uh, and that is always going to be a challenge. The DTS pro, pro, uh, pro, uh, product, which was only introduced three years ago, uh, has now grown and now accounts to 40% of all 
letters which we deliver and it's a, that is a product which doesn't go out unless there's two items to that address and then gets automatically delivered on day five uh, so you can see we were always going to face this point every other uh, European and world carrier is facing those challenges uh, and the important bit is making the right choices uh, and there are going to be further changes in raw mail in terms of larger parcels in the Midland hub uh, what track 48 does in terms of going on Sundays which we've got to anticipate uh, and you will see that raw mail have clearly looked at the speed of delivery option uh, and whilst we in in January when Ofcom produced the report we came out and we rejected both uh, the three day and four day option we we would have supported the five days option with uh, basically uh, the six days Saturday just being parcels that would have still meant 30% of delivery staff had to come in on Saturdays to deliver parcels so it wasn't everyone on uh, off on Saturdays but the company uh, is clearly not supporting that option because two reasons one it got very critic it got heavily criticized for dropping a day on delivery and also it doesn't realize uh, basically the money they need to sustain the business their three principles which we uh, discussed uh, when we met with CEO was any change would have to be the company has to be sustainable it's got to be the least impact on employees our members and the third option it's got to obviously allow for growth and, and we've added obviously a fourth we want to improve terms and conditions improve new entrance uh, terms and conditions so looking at that uh, we have looked at a, a, a style of speed of delivery which I think is probably uh, a reasonable op op uh, opportunity. We've dismissed the other two speed of deliveries and to be fair, Royal Mail have. The first speed of delivery option is what Germany's just adopted, which means they can come off flights, uh, very similar to Royal Mail, they can come off flying mail around by delaying first class from day B to day C. Uh, and everything gets delivered on day C. Uh, that would be, in our view, the worst uh, speed of delivery option. There's another speed of delivery option Ofcom uh, promotes, which is delaying second class and first class uh, in that. The opportunity we're looking at is something Royal Mail's called the optimised model. Uh, and we haven't, we're not aligned on everything they've put forward, but we are in uh, initial talks around can we shape it in the right way. And this is the important bit for Royal Mail and potentially for us. This does not uh, need government approval, doesn't need uh, basically go, go into uh, Parliament. It only needs Ofcom's approval. And the reason being, first class letters would be delivered as normal six days a week, along with parcels and uh, non priority items uh, like second class would be delivered to spec uh, which is obviously day C the only change is access mail which moves from day B to day C uh, and if you look at raw mail in terms of traffic Chris uh, it's 7 billion items they now deliver compared to 20 billion in 2002 and of those products 5 billion of them are what they consider as non-priority items. 550,000 is first class, uh, and then you've got 1.5 billion, uh, 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 roughly around parcels, smaller parcels, format one, two, and three, and four. The important bit of this model, though, it is purely a delivery-only change model. No mill center, no RDC, no area distribution, no collections, are impacted by this change of the USO. Uh, so that's important people understand that. And then you look at the delivery option, and this delivery option, uh, where we've been looking at this, that definitely does give more Saturdays off. I think the discussions we've looked at, and we think we can improve on this, is at least 40% on uh, Saturdays off. 
uh, and also the chance to improve uh, daily attendances, four day weeks, uh, arranges to that. Uh, we're in discussions with the company to look at how, how do we move this forward and potentially go with a trial. Uh, now this one coming overnight, I think Royal Mail's estimation is, is the first revisions they would do would be April 25. Uh, but we've got a chance to shape this if we get the right uh, negotiating uh, strategy around uh, new entrants, around attendance patterns, around attrition rates, around growth, uh, around improving relationships and addressing some of the failed revisions we could potentially go into a trial in several areas uh, ahead of any change. Uh, and we're meeting Royal Mail tomorrow on this. Our aim is by our conference in two and a half weeks that we would have a statement of principles which we can go to that conference uh, and obviously then look at how we can introduce this in a trial uh, and see how that works before obviously seeing whether we can accept the process. Thank you, Martin. So great there uh, for, for I think for everyone involved. Loads of detail, loads of context, loads of background. Uh, I know you two are eager to get on to the the reps and the members' questions. So just to repeat to the to the members watching, in a couple of weeks we will be having a another live session where we'll ask you to get on board and, uh, and ask those live questions. We have uh, trawled through your con comments and your thousands. We've looked at the issues. So. Uh, give you a few examples there's going to be questions today on Scotland there's going to be questions on network there's going to be questions on the current state of industrial relations um, in the company and and much much more so we're not going to shirk from anything there's going to be some real key challenges here today and tomorrow which obviously they're really keen to answer and really keen to meet I think uh, with a little bit of luck and a little bit of uh, testing our technological skill we've got Adam on the line I think we can test Adam now yeah I can see you Adam can I hear you Yes, yes, Chris. How are you? All right? Yeah, I'm fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Obviously, if you're from the our Leicestershire branch, uh, postal worker, CW representative, your question for Dave and Martin, my friend. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to ask the question. And also with regards to um, the three-day um, proposal, uh, I personally feel that I'm glad that's been rejected and ourselves as CW and Royal can work on, on this together. I mean, it was common sense. But like I always say, common sense, you know, um, is like deodorant. People who need it the most, they never use it. So, it's, it's, you know, at times it's a bit of a concern. But yeah, thank you. And, you know, thank you for the opportunity. So my question is, with regards to improve attendance patterns, uh, how can we, I know things we have to uh, move forward with certain things which are inevitable, but how can we move forward with um, improved attending patterns for our members, especially on Saturdays? I mean, having more Saturdays off and all that, that's the question. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for your time. Dave, I'm going to come to you first. I think that's a, a really good question. You got a question there from Adam, who's basically, I mean, following on from Martin, he set out our bargaining agenda there, is saying, look, you know, they, the company wants some things here, but so should we. We want a better work life balance. So I'll ask you to come in on that. And then, Martin, I know during your own election campaign recently, you were talking about the need to get more members Saturdays off, for example. But things like four day week, Dave, should, is that stuff we should be looking at? Yeah, look, we're going to make a priority uh, of re looking at all of the attendance patterns that we have and seeing how we can improve them as part of any change. We've got to do that. Um, one of the reasons for that, I think, is that we've been very firm over the years about a short working week. Uh, it's still uh, our ambition to reduce overall hours. Um, but I think there's a debate to be had with the members. Uh, around, you know, some people don't see the benefit of when the short working week has happened in the past and, and it reduces your daily workload by, say, 12 minutes uh, a day or whatever. Um, uh, and our view is it's now time to really look at this again, get our best people, get our ideas forward on how we can do the job in a better way than what Royal Mail are doing at the moment, for sure, uh, and we can do it in a way that genuinely improves attendance patterns. So on our agenda, we'll be more Saturdays off for our members. We'll be uh, more four day weeks for our members. Uh, and actually, you know, we're also gonna have to look at, I think some other things around functionalization. Um, the job is changing. The demands of customers undeniably are changing. And we got to see this as an opportunity to put right a lot of things that have happened in the last couple of years 
uh, based on Royal Mail's own unfortunate attitude on how they try to impose change, which still hasn't worked. This will not work, whatever they say about their preferred option. You know, if our members get together around this, and we're going to do that over the next coming weeks and months, uh, and we really set that bargaining agenda out, including better attendance patterns, as Adam has said, and we get behind it as a workforce, we will deliver improvements for our members as well as change. Is there, Dave, um, you know, is there a challenge for Adam as well, himself, as, and, and all of our reps out there to say, look, you know, we, we, we're not about sitting there waiting for Royal Mail's proposals, we should, because we're seeing it, I, I was speaking to one of our reps in, uh, in actually in this area, in South West London earlier in the week, who were you know, put in a duty set with a lot of four day weeks, a lot of innovation. Yeah. Like, do we, should we be coming to the table during this process? We definitely got to start to talk about, you know, our ideas on the future. And if we do that, there's evidence all over the place uh, of really good attendance patterns. Whenever you start to get into that debate, there's no better group of people than the postal workers themselves who want to contribute to that and good local reps, good area reps, uh, good reps right across the union coming together and saying that's what we how we can do this work now I, I'm also going to say something about late uh, deliveries on parcels because again you know Royal Mail can say what they've said today but the truth is unless they fix quality uh, and deliver what customers are already paying for unless we get resourcing right and it clearly isn't at the moment uh, and unless we actually grow the business one of our major concerns has been that if you take the wrong decision now, you break up the infrastructure of Royal Mail completely and you can never grow and le leverage the infrastructure as a growth opportunity. Well, this is a moment where we've really got to focus on that. We've got to have that conversation. And one of the areas that Royal Mail's got to grow in is delivering parcels at seven, eight, nine at night. Now, you know, if you do this right, there might be opportunities as there was years ago where people actually have really good attendance patterns, where it was attractive to people, it clearly isn't at the moment, to actually do some of this work. If we don't do that work, we're in this place again where Royal Mail will continue to go to agencies, will continue to go to self-employed, cheapest option possible. And that's when we get in this debate about, you know, where it undermines potentially our own terms and conditions. So we, we want to look at the whole thing. Yeah. I'm not sure anymore that functionalisation as it's set out today is actually in our benefit now if we want to protect full-time jobs. We could, we could look at this again and come up with a completely new delivery model that would take the pressure off of our members uh, going forward. Thanks, Dave. Spot on. Martin, good yeah, morning. You promised look. more Saturdays and time to deliver. <laughs> I think there's also, I, I mean, Adam, sorry, Adam's, I, mean, I, think, I don't know if he's still with us, but Adam... Yeah, he is. Uh, yeah. Obviously, he makes a really good point there, and a strong point around the Saturdays. Um, and, and with the network changing, and Dave's just pointed out there that you know there's so much going on. Uh, you know that Saturdays is obviously risen to to an even greater height now. Of people, no, but everybody a flip side of the argument. People want us to maintain a six day USO. We've seen that in the comments already so far today, but you must feel the emotion around that as you're going out and about. I know you're going out and about a lot. Yeah, look, we're spreading. And this is, you know, where people say during the dispute, they announced 10,000 job redundancies. Yeah. And that was because we're spreading less and less traffic over six days a week, losing hours and jobs on each of those days a week. Uh, and that's, that's going to continue. Uh, and bearing in mind their strategy is to move dedicated parcels for Mac 3 and 4 off the core as well, that's just going to grow. Uh, and I think we had to do the change. I would have liked to have seen 6 into 5, but this is probably uh, on the speed of delivery the best option uh, in terms of how we move that forward. Now, even Royal Mail's own stuff today, they have a group of four people working where they've given them 50% Saturdays off, yeah. uh, one in every two, uh, uh, and they rotate. Sorry, sorry, and no. I think we can increase that, Chris. Certainly the talks we're looking at is there's four day options in there, yeah. uh, and there is Saturdays off. Uh, and there is the ability, and this is the other bit we want to talk around, uh, PM parcels. Years ago, we would have, uh, we used to do parcel force uh, work on parcels and grow that. 
this is a real opportunity to grow next day delivery. Raw Mail's market share is very small. Uh, and like if we grow that, the fatigue issue in deliveries, you could have a walking week, like, and you can then have a, a later uh, drive week. Uh, and you could work out through fatigue. You could then have basically another work walking week where you're off Saturday. These rotations will help fatigue in deliveries. Mm. Uh, and I think that's something we've got to look at. Again, we're only modelling this at the moment, uh, and we'll see in some of that. Uh, we're not brought into the concept, but it's worth worth exploring at this moment in time. Is it? I mean, just want to. I mean, give you a chance for like you know twenty second answer on this because I want to move on to the next caller. But one of the things Dave was talking about earlier on, and I think was spot on prior to going on air, is obviously you you've noted you've set out that the Royal Mail have talked about fifty percent. Uh, how important is it that? You know, we make it clear to the members that's as a result of their support for the union and as a support of those early negotiations that even Royal Mail recognised that something has to give on the Saturdays. I, I think it's spot on. Their their original proposal uh, was four day a yeah, USO change. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so it's us who shaped that. Uh, it, us who's moved it where we we're, we're now you know they're now moving that issue forward like in the right way. Uh, and worst p possible scenario for us would be if they'd said the speed of option is first class to go a uh, day later. We would have probably lost a lot more jobs out of that. Dave, quickly, before we go next question. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we've got to be really truthful with that Royal Mail, if they could have got away with moving to a three or four day uh, delivery model, they would have done it yeah. because you know, some of the worst aspects of Royal Mail's management team are in the place where they only look at cheap uh, options to reward the shareholders. They're still in that place, and there's no point in kidding anybody about that. Not all of them. No. I, I think the CEO, uh, in the conversations we've had, is openly recognising that the company can't succeed without getting the workforce on board. Now, clearly, the dispute was a bitter moment for everybody, and it's still a hangover. For, for all of us in many ways, but we've got to get beyond that now. And, and to those who are saying, you know, no change, that's just not realistic. Uh, and we really want to have this conversation with our members, because if you want a job in the future, anybody who's seriously believing that we can sustain a six day USO with a type of volume decline in letters that's going to continue to accelerate, it's just not going to happen. Uh, our job is to create different roles for postal workers, different products, different services, keep the core infrastructure together, uh, which to some extent the work we've done behind the scenes uh, has stopped both politicians uh, and Royal Mail going further than what they've said to date. Now is that is that still a problem for us? Of course. But equally their operational stuff that they put out today, that's up to us to sit in the room and start to, as Martin said, work out a, a framework of principles on how we're going to try it, and we want our members to engage in that debate. We want ideas now. There's no point in us just keep uh, sort of saying we don't like what's happening. We've got to put our ideas firmly on the table for a new style of Royal Mail uh, that can grow in the future with new products, new services that isn't just reliant on delivering letters. Uh, and we think we've got some of those ideas. We share those ideas with our members and then we all get behind that agenda, mm. and then we go to Royal Mail. We're in a strong bargaining position at that point. That's what I did. Thank you, Adam. I think we're going to be able to bring in Claire now. I think that's right. Just, just testing the technology. Well, I was testing technology, show off my CW top here. You can get these all of our reps uh, with a QR code to join the uh, CW on. So if you're a rep, put your name and your office in the uh, YouTube comments now. We'll try and get you on. And here's Claire, because I, I filled it with some adverts, okay. Claire, but much better to hear from you. So your question to, to Dave and Martin, or questions? Um, yeah, so, you know, in, in our area, the USO is failing daily um, in numerous delivery offices. You know, I get reports of work not being prepped in the frames. It becomes a work plan failure, not a USO failure. This really needs to be challenged, as, as we don't believe we're the only area to be experiencing this um you know the uso is crucial for members job security really 
But there's another point I'd like to bring up is um, how how would a CWU deal with improving the IR relations as management are still following the mantra of it's our business to run? Our members are still not seeing any positive change and they just feel it's getting worse. They continue to ignore all the agreed um, procedures and the IR framework. How would a CWU address these issues along with the constant USO failings and staff shortages? Thank you, Claire. Brilliant question. I'm going to come to you. I'll reverse the order this time, freshen it up. Martin, I'll come to you first. I mean, Claire makes a really valid point there, and one which is made repetitively by a, a big chunk of our members, which is like like all the stuff we've talked about so far. They want to get involved in the USL changes. They want to be part of the, the debate. They want to have their say, but you know they can't see past the current chaos, particularly in delivery offices at the minute. You know, with the mantra continuing in a lot of places and a lot of um, you know management often at quite a senior level. And of course, daily USL fails. And you know, it's almost like, why are we talking about a new USL when we can't even comply with the current one, Martin? Yeah, look, let's be clear. Walmail imposed change on the workforce in deliveries, which, which was unprecedented and caused delivery disasters. Yeah. And a lot of those units are still recovering. Now, we've got a process uh, under uh, the joint statement, which was agreed on quality, where we're trying to slowly build duties back and there are deliveries going back into some units but it's taking far too long and there's still real problems uh, in in delivery offices which we need to change uh, however and there is there is something here where the company will say uh, that they, they're losing around 400 odd million pounds a year and they can't invest unless uh, they start turning that round. And that's part of the USO discussion as well. What we've got to do, and Claire's absolutely right, we've got to improve quality and resourcing. We can't go into a failing new de delivery USO uh, in, with the same problems. We've got to leverage any discussions to improve quality of service now and resourcing. And that's part of our agenda. In terms of the IR framework and the business to run, we're very conscious of that. Uh, Dave raised it to a CEO, we're raising it uh, constantly to Royal Mail. It's no good us at our level having an improved working relationship where we're beginning to make some moves, but everyone below us has seen no change at all. Uh, and you've got Rod's operational managers almost continuing our business to run and we've got to change that uh, and part of our demands for getting involved and shaping this is it's got to change everywhere uh, and you know we're using that leverage uh, to basically try and move that issue on Chris and it's definitely the top of our agenda I sent Royal Mail an agenda for our talks tomorrow and the two top things in there is resourcing quality and improving industrial relations below and employee relationships below us. Thank you Martin, hot off the press for you there Claire. Um, Dave, I know you're going to want to come on. We were speaking to a couple of different reps this morning who were making the same point uh, as Claire about you know how difficult it is to get people to see the wider picture when they're still getting battered in the workplace. Yeah uh, and look I think we've got to try and strike a balance here between on one hand recognising that some of the challenges the company's facing, irrespective of the way management are performing, uh, any postal administration in the world is facing the same challenges. And, and if we don't see that reality, um, then we're going to end up in, in a bad place completely where the company won't survive. Uh, so there's a truth to that. We don't like how we got here. They've inflicted some of the financial problems uh, by the decisions the board have made uh, and you know we can never let them forget that but they're there, they're here and there is a problem um, ultimately that's why it was the right thing as we said at the time to reach an agreement and to try and rebuild from that point um, but the other side of that is that again complete honesty you know we know some of the people who are still out there we know some of the managers and they got to be got rid of uh, we're telling Royal Mail who those managers are. They're out in the field, they're senior people. There's at least one or two 
um, there's no point in hiding this. They're still in headquarters. And I'll tell you where the CEO and the team that he's assembling, because don't forget four of the main players all went. They're looking at it and they've got voices telling them, don't get back involved with the union. You can get this change without any agreement. And the only way you stop that, Claire, uh, and everybody, is you get behind the union. Because we care about the future of the company and we use this bargaining agenda, which we're going to be setting out very clearly for our members in coming weeks, um, as part of this USO change. So what we're saying is don't view the USO in isolation. We're not going to. Royal Mail would be mad to believe, and some of them, you might say some of them are mad, um, that, that somehow they can introduce this change after all of the chaos, all of the failed revisions that you're referring to, you know, where we're still not clearing the offices, and then impose another change on top of that. Ain't going to work. And I think the strength of our position will be to talk to politicians, to talk to Ofcom, uh, who we're also not happy with because of the re regime on regulation that they've basically created over the years where they allow the competitor to cherry pick. Uh, that, that was a failing. But we are where we are and we've got to deal with it from now. So I think it's time to bring those things to a head, uh, particularly on the industrial relations. And the company got to make its mind up. The people who want to work with the union are there uh, and they're serious people and they can see the reality that they can't succeed without the workforce being on board. But all I'm being honest about is, and you know some of these people, Claire, in your own area, and we know them, um, uh, they are people who will never work with the union. Uh, they're people who are still relishing the opportunity to cause as much problems. What's got to be unacceptable, uh, and the CEO can't get away with this much longer, is, is you know, them being able to fiddle, basically, the, the workplace failures uh, and try and pretend that it ain't happening or it ain't being led by the top of, of the company. Because that's their position. If you listen to what they say, they say, that, yeah, there are workplace failures, but it's actually happening out there by rogue managers. Now, that's the bit we've got to jointly come together and flush out. This is a moment where if you deal with the big USO change and you put all of your agenda, including a completely new delivery model, because the current one's broken, we can come out of this in a better place. And that's what we've got to focus on, is all these things together going forward. Thanks, Dave. Claire, I'll give you, I don't know if you were still on the line, whether you had anything to say at the end of that? For 20 seconds or yeah, so. Yeah, just hope we could get things sorted out sooner rather than later, no, really. We understand that. Yeah, th thank you for coming on because it's not easy to come on and make that case. And I think you speak on a lot behalf of a lot of our members. So thank you, Claire. Uh, next on the line, I think we should have uh, our, one of our divisional reps, Ralph Ferret. Uh, it'd be nice to hear another Plumovian accent on the show. Uh, Ralph, are you there? Yeah, Hi, Chris. Yeah, good to see a Jana takeover, eh? Yeah, very good, mate. Your points you want to raise with uh, Dave and uh, Martin? Yeah, and uh, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Martin. So I think um, my, my main point, lads, is that uh, I've been getting out and about to lots of delivery offices as part of the reconnecting with the workplace. And the message I'm getting loud and clear from literally hundreds of postmen and women is everything else is window dressing. The bottom line is they can't do the walks as they're set up. There's too many delivery points. There's too much traffic. They're set up to fail and they're failing every single day. So if I'm a postman and I'm listening to this debate, I get there's a need for change, that we have to accept that the USO is gonna change in some way. But what I'm not gonna be able to get on board with is anything that doesn't fix that fundamental problem that my job is unachievable. So I think what you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to explain to postmen and women um, that this is gonna work for them, that what they're gonna to wanna to know is, if my amount of delivery points is coming down, but I'm actually going to have to go to more addresses because the call rate goes up, how does that fix my broken walk that I can't deal with? And on the sort of wider point, it was Royal Mail who broke these walks. Those imposed provisions under Grant McPherson were an absolute disgrace, and they're the reason why people are leaving Royal Mail in the droves and the quality of services on the floor. And the worst bit that I hear from postmen and women every day when I'm going around is they're getting blamed for this. 
So our members are getting treated like something unpleasant by their managers because they can't complete a walk that is not completable because of the targets and the setup that Royal Mail been put in place. So I guess quickly then, my question is, how will a change to USO fix that problem, perhaps? Thank you, Ralph. Uh, powerful and eloquent as always. Dave, can I come to you on that one first? Well, Ralph, you know, I mean, that feedback is, you know, clearly what's happening out there. We get it as well. Uh, speaking to postal workers all the time, same thing. They kind of get changed, but they're, they're struggling with their daily workload. They're not enjoying the role. Uh, morale's low. Um, and, and one of the worst things of that is, is when you can't compete your del complete your delivery uh, for the customer that, who our members care about more than the management. Um, and that's true. And Royal Mail got to start sitting up and, and taking note of their own workers on this rather than trying to hide from the reality of what's happening uh, in the locality because of concerns around you know, what the shareholders might think, what, what uh, businesses think. Um, it's time for a bit of truth and honesty, isn't it? We're always up for that, whether that's about the agreement, whether that's about the dispute, whether that's about this next stage. You, you won't hear anything from us other than trying to put it right. Um, so how do we do it? It's the same position that we set out to Claire. It, we really have now got to come together as a workforce and as a union. And we've got to move on to the next stage of what's going to determine the future. And we've got to see these things together. We cannot and we will not, let me make that absolutely clear, we, we're not going to do deals on the USO change if these circumstances that are taking place day in, day out in local workplaces are, are not uh, addressed. And Martin's already said that to you. You know, we know that Royal Mail know where we're coming from on this. And I think it's up to everybody now in the local offices, get behind your local reps, get behind uh, the union's agenda, and we will be in a better place. If we allow them to split us on this, which is clearly the tactics of some managers still, uh, where they try and sort of undermine the union, um, then Royal Mail will carry on. And what will happen with the USO change is they'll just take the money and things won't change on the ground. We can't allow that to happen. We're signalling to Royal Mail, to Ofcom, to the government and to the Labour Party as the opposition who will be in government. Uh, we want to fix Royal Mail. We want to build its future. But they've got to start listening to their own workforce. If they do that, and I think one of the key challenges for them, let the workforce determine uh, what is a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Uh, we've got ideas that we're putting forward about changing completely the way of working, giving options for people who might be a bit older uh, but don't want to sort of do a part-time job where they come in every day but might do three days a week or whatever, if that suits them. This is a moment to bring those things together. So our key message is we're not viewing the USO in isolation to those problems. Uh, we're going at Royal Mail on all fronts to try and find a solution, which we believe is there. We're confident that we can come out of this with a better deal for delivery workers. Part of that is being honest about the need for change. Part of that is Royal Mail finally accepting that they're going to be in a better place for the future if the workforce are on board. Martin, did you have anything to say on that one? Yeah, I do. Look, I agree with Ralph. Uh, whenever I've gone out to speak to members, like they, they can't clear now. Uh, and they're frustrated. I, I always say no, the model Royal Mail are looking for in the future is totally different to what they're currently doing. So all the larger parcels which our members are currently doing on the core, they no longer exist on the core. Uh, and that's really important because that future is a growth in Royal Mail going forward. Uh, that's your PM parcels which Royal Mail only have a 30 odd percent share on which they can grow up to 60 70 percent which really changes the dial on revenue uh you know some of our terms and conditions which we want to improve uh, latch onto that the other element it's worth looking at on this is you've got to remember in terms of first class 
that gets delivered every single day. What's different here is those non-priority items, like they don't go out every single day. That five billion of items is different. And it's how we shape that to make sure quality is delivered every single day. Uh, and how we make sure we grow in the company, but also improve attendances, improve new entrance contracts, and make the job doable now. Uh, because what happens here is some of the talks we've had, some of the modeling, the actual number of delivery points, which currently on average is 500 per round. Now we know some people have up to a thousand, but the average is 500. This model will reduce the number of delivery points per round on average, uh, but it will increase the call rate because you're going to more addresses on that route. Uh, all of those kind of things we're trying to uh, work through, Ralph, uh, but we're not going to do any deal which doesn't uh, improve quality, improve where members are now in terms of their terms and conditions, and also w where our members' tendencies are and the doable ability of the job. Uh, those are four key aspects we want to make sure, and on top of that, no compulsory redundancies, and of course, we've got a pay and short working week agenda we want to achieve as well. Thank you, Martin. And thank you, Ralph, for taking your time to ask the question. Mate, one of the, uh, the final question uh, we're gonna take from uh, one of our representatives is from Owen uh, up in Scotland number two branch. Now, you'll both know uh, the network changes has been a highly emotive subject with, with later delivery starts and almost like an on block issue uh, in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, where there's been a lot of um, you know, outcry and people really worried about the service, people are worried about working when it's dark, people are worried about you know, really drastically changing their whole work-life balance. And loads of our members you know, things, you know, want to do things on the weekend, they want to do things on the evening, children, football, and all those things which we've regularly uh, talked about. I know that Owen is hopefully on the line with us now and has got quite a bit to say connecting that to the USO argument. How are you doing, Owen? Not too bad, Chris. How are you? Yeah, really good, mate. Good to have you with us. Your question, uh, or you know, or, or position you want to put to Dave and Martin. Awesome, thank you. Uh, my well, mine's technically a, a two-part question. So the first part of this question is obviously based around this USO change. Uh, whether the plan of this USO change is to help mitigate these network changes any further. Um, not that I'm a big fan of watering down the USO to, to assist with the network change, but we are getting better in Scotland with the network change issues. Um, massive upheaval, high anxieties among the membership um, is probably right now one of the top things that we're, we're obviously dealing with. And the second part to this question more relates to timescales. This network change is coming in in June, and by the sounds of these USO changes, they're not a five-minute job. So if the plan is to use these changes to assist us in mitigating our start time changes, um, how do we expect to be able to do that with the network changes coming in in June? Thanks, Sean. I'm gonna keep you on the line as well, give you the chance to come back once we've had answers from Martin and Dave. Martin, I'm gonna to come to you first on that one, if that's okay. Yeah, Owen, two good points here. Look, in terms of the first point, we, we want to trial uh, you know anything we agree in Scotland and a few other parts of the UK uh, and some of that is we understand clearly the challenges Royal Mail will always come in off flights they're always going to serve notice Scotland in its geographical area uh, is really challenging uh, and I think <clears throat> you've got 123 units which go past uh, 60 minutes uh, and you know we still think Royal Mail have, uh, are too cautious on that Owen uh, we still think speaking to divisional reps uh, that we can move that dial down from 90 minutes 123 minutes uh, by this post implementation review I wrote to Royal Mail today to ask for a meeting with uh, Alistair Cochran uh, along with the Scottish Divisional Reps, along with myself and uh, uh, basically the ROD uh, to try and find some solutions in Scotland ahead of that uh, point. 
We've also agreed, and this is the other important point of the impl post implementation review uh, in this, is the seasonal variations, which obviously kick in for 11 weeks, which normally mean people start 14 minutes earlier uh, and finish in t uh, 10 minutes, sorry, start 14 minutes later, finish 10 minutes earlier in the summer. We've changed that with agreement with the company that people will start nine minutes later and finish in 15 minutes earlier. So that means uh, the PIR, which is uh, time for 12 weeks, uh, people will still be finishing 15 minutes earlier than their current scheduled attendance pattern. We also agreed, Owen, as you know, if they have a wave one to wave, uh, 15 minute real, meal relief between wave one and wave two, no office needs to be uh, more than uh, 60 minutes uh, during that 12 week period up to the post implementation review. Uh, and so we're still working on Scotland. Now, in terms of the SO change, the reason why we want to use Scotland is we want to really reduce the number of days uh, which uh, people work. Uh, and I think Dave made the point, there's a balance between a shorter working week and less working days. Uh, and we want to make sure this model means people have to work less Saturdays for less days during the week. Uh, and what we're trying to do, not only in Scotland, bearing in mind that there's 236 units who finish after 60 minutes in the modelling, the rest, 86%, finish well below 60 minutes. We're really trying to move the dial on that, and like I say, we want a meeting uh, with Royal Mail over Scotland, and also we're going to meet the Scottish Division at conference uh, to update them as well as part of those talks. So we're determined, we know how passionate people are, myself and Dave was up here all AGM, wasn't it? Uh, and we're going to come back and hopefully move the dial on later start times, but also be in a position where we can say uh, Scotland's going to enter into a trial uh, with less Saturdays, less attendances on this uh, optimised model. Thanks, Mike. Dave, when I think back to, um, we went to Scotland a number of times during the dispute, and, and as it was right across the UK, the support was unbelievable. Um, we do, we are seeing a lot of our members up in Scotland feeling a little bit left out, feeling, you know, uh, kind of drift a bit. And Martin's pointed out there that, you know, Union clearly feels we can get it under 60. Um, what would your message be to our members? Who, you know, Owen, uh, we'll bring him back in in a second, but they uh, made, made the point really powerfully. Uh, our message members in Scotland who are, who are, like he said, feeling anxious, worried, and feel, maybe feeling a little bit let down. Um, look, I think what Martin said is a range of options which can mitigate the later starts issue. What's happening with the optimised delivery model that we may well want to trial, and one of the areas that we would want to trial it in Scotland, is that we get the opportunity uh, to mitigate it further. Um, and obviously the backdrop to the Scotland side of this is that um, you know, geographically, it's much more challenging when you take the flights out. Not, not in isolation, as Martin said, he's got the numbers. I mean, what we can demonstrate is that through the work that the team have been doing, Martin's been leading on, um, we have mitigated a lot of Royal Mail's original plans, and we're confident that we can do more of it. I don't think it's about us making a, an absolute choice. It's not about saying, let's go for this USO model because it it might help mitigate later starts. That would be the wrong choice. The reality is the two are coming together. And the way I would approach it, Owen, uh, with the members and that, is to say, you know, that we, we can't sustain the current USO. It's, it's not gonna be sustainable in a changing world of communications and customer needs. There's a truth to that that none of us can, can face away from. But within that, we can deal with it. But it always comes down to this one point, and we've been talking obviously to all the reps in Scotland, uh, and they're up for it, there's no doubt about that. They're up for coming together, getting the members behind a, a change that can actually be more beneficial to our members, whilst also dealing with the reality of later starts. Uh, and we want to trial that in Scotland, not exclusively, we want to trial it in other places. Your point about the timelines is well made, um, there is obviously an issue around whether or not 
you know, the actual overall change is probably still some way off because Ofcom haven't yet reached uh, a point where they're making any recommendations. They've got to consider all these issues. Um, but our view is, is that, and we have had discussions already on this, that there's nothing stopping us trialing some of these things in advance of that. And hopefully within a timeline that can deal with, uh, you know, the notice that's been served on later starts as well. So that's our, that's our intention. Uh, that's what we'll be doing and the best chance of making that happen is if we get you guys and all of the reps and members behind that agenda. Spot on Dave Owen, do you want to just come back really briefly mate? we're just getting, I think we're in the seminar part now, but I want to give you the chance, Yeah, I'm listening to Dave, Martin, anything else you want to add mate? Yeah, just just briefly, um, it's obviously nice to hear Dave talk like that because it was one of the biggest fears we had with the network change was obviously that the USO would be used as a bargaining chip to try and make sure that the network change wasn't going to be as bad for our members and I believe that could have obviously caused us massive troubles down the line. Um, listen, I know this is all on the USO and I don't really want to keep going on network change but for us, every five minutes, um, every ten minutes is going to be less people, less members that leave um, so anything that can be mitigated and anything can be done um, is just going to help further protect us as a union and our members going forward in Scotland. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, and I think you spoke really, really well there on behalf of a lot of members, so thank you for coming on. Um, just to everyone who's been piling into the comments, thank you. That's brilliant. Those people want a T-shirt, which is great. That's really good news. Um, we'll... Uh, as I said to you, Scotland colours as well. By yeah, the way. Scottish. Yeah, yeah. We've also got pink versions as well. Uh, so I'll be sporting that in next week's show, maybe. Um, wanted to say to the members who uh, have asked comments that, as we said at the top of the show, there's going to be a live session where you're going to get the chance to come on, uh, message us, and come on like you've seen the full reps do today, uh, uncensored, and and put your point across. So I think that's really exciting. We really are looking forward to that. So that's going to be in a couple of weeks. We'll just firm up the date with. Uh, Dave and Martin so with that though I'm going to ask you both maybe for a minute uh, to just give us any final thoughts and close up the session starting with yourself Martin yeah look uh, we thought it was important to update you today uh, we've got our senior field officials divisional reps uh, away next week in Cardiff where we're going to go through a little bit more detail of, uh, on the USO uh, and then we've got a conference where we're going to have uh, a session on the co uh, USO give people an update and that hopefully by then uh, we've met Rommel two or three times and got uh, a statement of principles uh, it's got to be uh, based on some of our agenda some of what we want to model uh, and we're going to try and shape this in a way which uh, allows for growth has the least impact on our members jobs but also changes resourcing, changes uh, the duty patterns, allows more Saturdays off and addresses the new entrance issue. Uh, and that's our aim uh, before conference. Uh, and obviously uh, in a couple of weeks when we come back here, we can give you a further update. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for your time as well. I think you all answered the questions excellently. Dave, your final closing message. Yeah, so, you know, another, I suppose, big moment where Royal Mail are, are pressing for change in the USO. We have to acknowledge there's a reality to that. It's happening everywhere across the world. Uh, and we can turn this into something better than the current experience our members are having uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. That will be our agenda, will be to bring these things together, uh, will be not to give Royal Mail the green light to a USO change uh, in terms of how it affects the operation and all of the revisions that would have to go in place. They can't do it without you. They can't make a success of it without you. Uh, and, and our job now, I think, is to come together as a union around a, a really strong agenda that will change what you're seeing at the moment on a daily basis. And at the same time, do the right thing for the future of the company um, where we know that unless we start to get to grips with less letters and more parcels and start to address the customer needs, Royal Mail won't survive. Uh, so, you know, th these are difficult moments again, but they're moments where the union's got a very clear agenda. You're going to be hearing that 
over the coming weeks and months and most importantly you're going to help shape it and as Chris said we look forward uh, to the meeting uh, in a couple of weeks time where you've got a chance to sort of settle down a little bit here think about this a bit more and then come back to us and put your questions directly to us uh, if we get it right here there's a moment of change that could actually be good for for our members could be good for customers and could be good for the company and that's what we want Thank you, Dave. So thank you to both of you for joining us. Thank you to our reps who came on and asked some fantastic questions as well. Obviously, to say this is our first show in the new studio, a few little bits and bobs will improve. And our microphones will change next week when we do next week's show. I want to say thanks as well to the team behind the scenes. This wasn't the planned session today. We had a totally different uh, recorded session today, but Dave particularly felt that we and Martin that we should go live to the members given the, the importance of the USO sessions. So that's what we've done. And I think the team uh, tech-wise have really managed to pull it off for us. So we're really looking forward to seeing you all in a couple of weeks. Keep fighting, keep getting behind the union and thanks for your support, everyone.